Finally, after months of pushing African Union leaders and African leaders to listen a speech from Zelensky, the African leaders decided that, you know what, let's just go ahead and do it. So yesterday, African Union invited all the 55 heads of states to the virtual session to listen to Zelensky's speech. Now, fortunately, only four attended. Now, the reason why only four people attended has absolutely nothing to do with people boycotting Zelensky. Maybe there are some African countries that don't like to listen to this guy, but I doubt it. I think it's just that right now the East African Federation have their own meetings going on. A lot of African countries are dealing with their own issues, so people just didn't have time for it. Now, the four countries that attended is, of course, Macky Sall, who is the chairman of the African Union. There's Otari from Cote d'Ivoire and Libyan councils and Mohamed El Menfi and Denis Sassou from Congo. So those four head of states were the only one who attended. Even though the head of states were missing, all the African countries sent representatives. I personally think that Zelensky could have done a better job with this speech, and I will explain to you why, but, but let me first show you a clip from it. Африка фактично в заручниках, в заручниках у тих, хто розв'язав війну проти нашої держави. Ця війна може здаватися декому дуже далекою від, від вас і ваших країн, але ціни на продовольство, які зростають катастрофічно, вже занесли її додому до мільйонів африканських родин. Так само, як і до багатьох сімей в країнах Азії, в країнах Європи, Латинської Америки. На всіх континентах болісно відчувається несправедливий і спровокований російською війною рівень продовольчих цін. Але саме для ваших країн це, на жаль, може стати особливою проблемою. Маємо врахувати різні фактори зростання кількості населення на Африканському континенті, триваюче економічне відновлення після пандемії, нестачу внутрішніх фінансових запасів у багатьох держав, щоб купувати продовольство за значно вищими цінами. В умовах саме фізичного дефіциту на глобальному ринку деяким країнам Африканського континенту особливо складно зберегти необхідне постачання продовольства. I think this is a failed speech from Zelensky. I think he failed to realize who his audience is. You are giving a speech to the head of African Union and to head of African countries. They know what the situation is in Africa. They know what are the issues that we are facing. You don't have to come and lecture us about them. And by the way, we are not hostage to Putin. Putin and Russia is not keeping us in hostage. We are hostage to bad leaders. We shouldn't be in this position in the first place if our leaders behaved like the leaders of Eritrea who have taken farming seriously. We wouldn't need anything from anyone. So this is a self-inflicted wound and whatever happens between Russia and Ukraine, the reality is that we should aim to become more self-sufficient and less dependent on European countries for food and for everything else. This is a lesson to every African country. And listen to some of the things that African leaders have been saying, I think they have finally understood that we cannot be in this position. We cannot be this vulnerable to things that happen on the other side of the globe. I think Zelensky could have done a better job. First of all, I think that it was totally unnecessary to start lecturing about what's happening. We all know what's happening. You don't have to explain it to us like children. But what you could have done is what Putin did. And of course, Putin is a leader who's been in power for a long time, so he has more experience. But when African Union head went to meet Putin, what Putin did is he put things into historical perspective. He brought up all the positive relationships Africa and Russia has had, all the good things that we've done together, all the things we've achieved. And he also brought up things like how they supported Africa against the colonialists. Now, if I was Zelensky, right, I would have done the same thing. Because we do have history with Ukraine. Now recently we've been trading with Ukraine, but Ukraine has historically sent peacekeeping forces to some parts of the continent with the UN. A lot of the African leaders, a lot of people, even some of my family members, were trained 
in Kiev. Now, back in the days when it was part of Soviet Union, but still, Kiev and Ukraine has always been an important place where Africans go to study. Now, we all know what happened to those African students when the war began, but that's another story. But that's still something that we have. He should have brought that up. What he also should have done is he should have put things into perspective for the people who are listening to him, you know, for Africans who are listening to him. He should have said things like what the Russians are doing to us today is what the Europeans did to you back in the colonialism era. When they invaded you, cut your country in pieces, and that's what Russia is trying to do. He should have said it, but he can't say it because at the end of the day, he cannot criticize the people who are funding him. And I understand that. I have no problem with that. But I'm just saying that it would have been a better speech if he actually considered who his audience is, instead of coming and lecturing us about things that we already know. Now, I do wish all the best for Zelensky. Now the speech is done. Until the next speech, I'm out. Thanks you all for watching. I'll see you on the next one.